But anyway, they take uh, one car over to Geneva. Uh, it wasn't a runner, but that was purely on the show stand in the show. All nicely polished and finished. But I say, it wasn't a runner. Bob Perry, the publicity man for the idea, he took 96 HP. They said, can you spare that? I said, yeah, you can have that. Uh, purely to demonstrate to the customers. And that was it. So off they go with two cars. Uh, I'm just carrying on with the open E-Type, 77RW. Anyway, they'd uh, open the show. And of course, one thing that we, I mean, even Lions didn't realise was the impact the E-Type would have on the motoring world, press and dealers and customers. They, they just couldn't believe that such a car could be built you know, and sold at the price, just over two thousand pound, one hundred fifty mile an hour car, <laughs> being sold to the public. I can't believe it, you know. So this was the origination, and I say none of us realised the impact the E-Type would have. So they've gone over there, the two cars, one on the stand. Bob Berry demonstrated. Now, the Monday, Bob started demonstrating. Now, when you demonstrated in Geneva, they've got a, a bit of a hill climb, long side of the lake. And you, get, you climb up, and then you go over the top, there's a long straight over the top. I found when I got out there, you could knock about 140 miles an hour on that top straight, and then come down and back to the start. Drop the customer out, and take another one, do all that. So Bob Berry, you see, when he started on the Monday, the queue for the, for, for the E-Top, he said, I can't go, I can't do this. So Lyon said to him, why? He said, no, no, he said, I, I can't do it. He said, what do you want? He said, can't you get Norman over, he said, with the, with the uh, open e the other open car. He said, well, if you, if you feel that way, he said, uh, all right. So Lyon's got back to uh, Coventry, to the factory, spoke to my boss. He said, get Dewis over with the other E-type. Bob Betty can't go. So Haynes, my boss, then said, where's Norman? They said, oh, he's at uh, Myra. He's testing the, light, uh, the open E-type. So he gets on to Frank Dolby, he's the track manager, said, get Norman off the track straight away, send him back. <laughs> so I'm doing these brake tests. Dolby comes out in his Land Rover, stops me, he said, Norman, I said, yeah. He said, they want you back in the factory. I said, what was it? I don't know, he said, it's urgent, they want you back. So I go back to the factory, and uh, there's Haynes, uh, two or three fitters, and uh, <coughs> I drive in, in the experimental shop, get out of the car, and I said, what's going on? He said, uh, oh, Norman, he said, uh, you've got to get this over to Geneva. I said, what? Oh, I see. I said, well, it's got all my brain equipment in here. I mean, you have line pressure gauges, diesel gauge, pedal pressure gauge, all this is in the car, and this is what I'm doing the brakes. He said, don't worry, these guys are going to take it all out and get it all polished and clean. So I'm thinking, I'll say, that's all right, I'll go off in the morning. So I said to him, I said, all right, I said, I might as well go home now then. I said, I'll uh, pick it up in the morning. He said, what? I said, no, you'll get it ready for the morning. He said, you've got to go today, tonight. I said, no way. <laughs> and he gave me this envelope, he said, uh, there's your boat pass. <laughs> I said, oh, where am I going? He said, from Ostend to, uh, from Dover to Ostend. I've done that several times, of course, when I did jab it, you see. So, uh, I said, I said, oh, there's no way I'm going to do this. He said, Norman, just try and do it. I said, all right, I'll go home and get me overnight back, which I uh, usually had an overnight back from these quick jobs. He said, it's already in your office. He said, we've been out <laughs> So, I hang about and I left, when they finished the car, I left Coventry at uh, quarter to eight. I'd got to be at Do Dover for 10 o'clock. I mean, in those days, we didn't have the motorway. No motorway. But the A5 was pretty good. You could cruise down 75, 80 down there. So I set up, I say, quarter to eight. I go straight down to London, Edgware Road, it's a, it's a long road Edgware, but it's all traffic lights. 
And uh, luckily for me, I, I went down each way doing about 65. Because the first lights I hit were green. And all the rest were green, green, green. I thought, this is great. Great. I'm making it. Anyway, just before I got into Dover, I stopped and filled it up. I thought, well, I'll need enough fuel. Uh, I don't want to stop over there. So I filled it up, get to Dover, drive in the dockyard there, and I can see, see this boat lit up. I thought, ah, there's a boat. Uh, and I've stopped, there's no, nobody about, no cars, I thought. Then this guy came over with his uh, torch. He said, excuse me, sir, can I help you? I said, uh, is that the uh, Austin boat? He said, yeah. I said, I've got a view on it. He said, sorry, sir. He said, you're too late. He said, uh, we close the gate, 10 minutes. I said, but it's not gone out yet. He said, well, it probably won't go out for another 20 minutes, but I'm sorry, you can't, the gate's closed. And then he's like, like, you know, <coughs> shot on the uh, e top and he said, what, what's this? I said, this is the new Jaguar e top Oh, he said, that's the one they've been on the radio, television. He said, all the motor world said, oh, it's, it's a knockout car. I said, well, this is it. He said, you've got to get to Geneva. I said, yeah, he said, hang on. So he got on his two-way radio and uh, said, you've got to let this go on. He's got the new Jaguar e top <laughs> So they opened the gate, let me on, and uh, that's how, it, the only thing, I got the e top that I got on the boat. So I got over to Ostend. Uh, of course, all the crew and all that were waiting to see this car. <coughs> Got off at Ostend and I drove uh, from Ostend into Brussels. Then uh, I stopped twice to go beyond the hedge, you know, a couple of times. That was about the only stops I had. And uh, I, I drove non stop all the way then, uh, as I get off the boat, straight through to Geneva. I got there, said if you could be there for 10 o'clock in the morning, that would be nice because all the press will be waiting and that. I got there 12 minutes to 10. Couldn't believe it. <laughs> so I drove up to the salon, uh, the, the show salon, and there was Sir William Limes, uh, all the press people, crowds of people, and uh, I pulled up. Lyons walked over and he just uh, looked at me, he said, and he looked at his watch, he said, Well done, Lewis, I thought you'd do it, and walked off. That's all the congratulations you got. <laughs> and, uh, so as I say, lofty, lofty England then came over, but he, he gave me a big hug, he said, no, I don't know how you've done it, he said, but he said, you've got 12 minutes to spare. <laughs> so I said, yeah, I said, well, I said, I've done my best. I said, where's my hotel? He said, what? I said, where, where, where am I staying? He said, why? I said, oh, I need to go to bed. I said, I haven't been to my bed for two nights. He said, you haven't got time, you've got to get up there, start demonstrating. <laughs> <laughs> so that was it. Uh, what I did, that record, that, they called it a record run. When I left Coventry to Geneva, <clears throat> not counting the road time, which was three and a quarter hours or so, my total time on the road was 11 hours. I'd average 68 miles an hour. And, uh, you know, <laughs> and they, they, as they say, they call it. Now, the interesting thing is, uh, you know, Top Gear, uh, the new program is coming on. Top Gear, they got me to go over to Geneva this year, want to be there, because what they've done, uh, one of the guys, they were going to try and beat this 11 hours. <laughs> so they, had an e-time and uh, the guy had a, an observer with him. He had sat now. <laughs> <laughs> and I was all, all this is, is for the film you see is I'm in the I'm in the show sitting there waiting. The cars comes in and I then get out of the chair, go across to him and say well they said you say what you like. I said well I'll think of some things. So the car comes in, all the lights are on, all the crowd are there. He stops, I get out of the chair, walk over to the, and open the door for him. And he's getting out, he said, are you Norman? I said, yeah, I said, where you been? He stopped for coffee. <laughs> <laughs> so that's all part of the film. Now what they, what he said was, he said, Norman, I, I, I can't believe how you did that run, it's 11 hours. I said, well, did he? I said, have you been trying? He said, yeah. 
He said, I've got sat now, I've got an observer. He said, 15 hours. <laughs> I said, well, you're not trying. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, that gives you these. Now, the quick story of the, uh, the dash over to Geneva. <laughs>